Our world is covered in green, this green is made of plants. Plants are incredibly important for all life, they produce the oxygen we breathe, they form the base of most food chains. Without plants, Earth would be a very different place. Studying plants helps us understand our planet. Plant biodiversity refers to the variety of plant life. This variety is truly amazing from tiny mosses to giant trees. Exploring this diversity reveals fascinating stories of evolution. Plants are essential for human survival. We use them for food like fruits and vegetables. We use them for medicine. We build homes with wood from trees. Cotton for our clothes comes from plants. Even the air we breathe is cleaned by plants. Understanding plant life helps us use these resources wisely. It also helps us protect them for the future. The study of plants known as botany is a vital science. It uncovers the secrets of plant growth and reproduction. The diversity of plants is vast. Scientists have identified hundreds of thousands of plant species. Each species has unique features. These features help them survive in different environments. Get ready to discover the incredible world of plants. South Africa has a rich plant biodiversity. Bryophytes are some of the earliest land plants. They are small and often grow in damp places. This group includes mosses, liverworts, and hornworts. You might see mosses growing on wet rocks or on tree trunks in shady forests. Bryophytes do not have true roots. They have structures called rhizoids. Rhizoids anchor them but do not absorb much water. They also lack true stems and leaves. Their bodies are simple. These plants are non-vascular. This means they do not have special tissues. These tissues called xylem and phloem transport water and food. Because they lack these, bryophytes stay small. Water and nutrients move slowly from cell to cell. They absorb water directly through their surfaces. This is why they need moist environments. They cannot pull water up from deep in the soil. Their structure limits their size and where they can live. Bryophytes reproduce using spores, not seeds. Spores are tiny single cells. They can grow into new plants if conditions are right. In South Africa, bryophytes are found in many habitats. They were among the first plants to colonize land. Pteridophytes represent the next step in plant evolution. This group includes ferns, horsetails, and club mosses. They are more complex than bryophytes. A major advancement is the presence of vascular tissue. This tissue, xylem and phloem, transports water and nutrients. This allows pteridophytes to grow much taller than mosses. They can move water from the soil up to their leaves. Unlike bryophytes, pteridophytes have true roots. These roots anchor the plant firmly in the soil. They also absorb water and minerals efficiently. Pteridophytes also possess true stems and leaves. The leaves, often called fronds and ferns, are specialized for photosynthesis. They capture sunlight to make food. These structures allow them to live in a wider range of land habitats. Reproduction in pteridophytes also involves spores. These spores are typically found on the underside of fern fronds. Like bryophytes, pteridophytes still require water for fertilization. Ferns are common in South African landscapes. The Knizna forest is famous for its beautiful tree ferns. Various fern species also adorn mountain kloofs and stream banks. Pteridophytes contribute to the ecosystem. Gymnosperms mark a significant evolutionary leap, the seed. The name gymnosperm means naked seed. Their seeds are not enclosed within a fruit. Instead, they are often found on the scales of cones. This group includes familiar plants like conifers, pines, firs, and cedars. It also includes cycads and ginkgos. Gymnosperms are vascular plants. They have well-developed roots, stems, and leaves. Many are large trees that form vast forests. A key adaptation in gymnosperms is the seed. A seed contains an embryo, a food supply, and a protective coat. This is a big advantage over spores. Another major adaptation is pollen. Pollen grains contain the male gametes. Wind usually carries pollen to the female reproductive parts. This means gymnosperms do not need water for fertilization. Gymnosperms have true roots that anchor them. Their leaves are often needle-like or scale-like, like in pine trees. These types of leaves are well adapted to reduce water loss. Many conifers are evergreen. They keep their leaves throughout the year. South Africa is home to some unique gymnosperms. Cycads, like species of, are ancient plants. Section 5 The Flowering Marvels Angiosperms Dominators of the Plant Kingdom Angiosperms are the flowering plants. They are the most diverse and widespread group of plants today. They dominate most terrestrial ecosystems. From tiny duckweed to giant eucalyptus trees, angiosperms come in all forms. The defining feature of angiosperms is the flower. 
flowers are reproductive structures. Another key feature is that their seeds are enclosed within a fruit. The word angiosperm means enclosed seed. This protects the developing seed. Like gymnosperms, angiosperms are vascular plants. They have highly developed roots, stems, and leaves. Their vascular tissues are very efficient. This allows for rapid growth and complex structures. Angiosperms show incredible diversity in their leaf shapes. They also have varied stem modifications. Their roots can be adapted for storage like carrots or support. This adaptability has allowed them to colonize nearly every habitat on Earth. Reproduction in angiosperms is highly advanced. Pollen containing male gametes is transferred to the flower's female parts. After fertilization seeds develop inside an ovary. The ovary then develops into a fruit. South Africa boasts an extraordinary richness of angiosperms. The Cape Floristic region is a global biodiversity hotspot. Section 6. Conquering the Land. A Tale of Adaptation. The journey from bryophytes to angiosperms is a story of increasing adaptation to land. Bryophytes, the earliest land colonizers, show many limitations. They lack vascular tissues, true roots, and leaves. This restricts their size. They are heavily dependent on moist environments. Their reproduction requires water for sperm to swim. These features tie them closely to their aquatic origins. They represent the first tentative steps onto land. Pteridophytes, like ferns, show significant advancements. They developed vascular tissues. This allowed for transport of water and nutrients. It enabled them to grow taller. They also evolved true roots, stems, and leaves. These structures improved water absorption and photosynthesis. However, pteridophytes still reproduce using spores. They still need water for fertilization. Gymnosperms took major strides in land adaptation. The evolution of the seed was a game changer. Seeds provide protection and nourishment for the embryo. The development of pollen was equally important. Pollen eliminated the need for water for fertilization. Angiosperms represent the pinnacle of plant adaptation to land. Section 7, Two Paths to Perpetuation, Asexual Versus. Sexual Reproduction in Plants. Plants can reproduce in two main ways, asexually or sexually. Asexual reproduction involves only one parent. The offspring are genetically identical to the parent. This is like making a clone. Common methods include vegetative propagation. For example, strawberry plants send out runners. These runners can grow into new plants. Potatoes can grow from tubers. Some plants can grow from cuttings of stems or leaves. This method is often rapid. Asexual reproduction has several advantages. It is fast and efficient. A single plant can quickly colonize an area. This is useful in stable environments where the parent plant is well adapted. There is no need to find a mate or rely on pollinators. Energy is not wasted on producing flowers or seeds. However, the main disadvantage is the lack of genetic variation. If the environment changes or a disease strikes, all identical offspring may be affected. This can be risky for long-term survival. Sexual reproduction involves two parents or two gametes. It combines genetic material from both. This produces offspring that are genetically different from the parents. In plants, this usually involves the fusion of male gametes, in pollen, with female gametes, ovules. This process leads to the formation of seeds. The primary advantage of sexual reproduction is genetic variation. This variation allows populations to adapt to changing conditions. Section 8. The Grand Display Flowers and the Dance of Pollination. Flowers are the reproductive organs of angiosperms. They are not just beautiful, they serve a vital purpose. A typical flower has several parts. Sepals protect the flower bud. Petals are often brightly colored to attract pollinators. Stamens are the male parts, producing pollen. The pistil, or carpal, is the female part, containing ovules. The main role of the flower is to facilitate pollination. Pollination is the transfer of pollen from a stamen to a pistil. This is the first step towards fertilization and seed production. Pollination can occur in various ways. Some plants rely on wind to carry their pollen. These flowers are usually small and not colorful. Grasses and many trees are wind-pollinated. Other plants use water for pollination, especially aquatic plants. However, many angiosperms rely on animals as pollinators. Insects like bees, butterflies, and moths are common pollinators. Birds, such as sunbirds and hummingbirds, also pollinate certain flowers. Even bats can be pollinators for some night-blooming flowers. This interaction between plants and pollinators is fascinating. Flowers have evolved specific features to attract their particular pollinators. This is called co-evolution. Bee-pollinated flowers are often blue or yellow. 
They may have nectar guides, visible only in UV light to bees. Bird pollinated flowers are often red or orange, they are usually tubular and produce lots of nectar. Section 9. Conclusion. Seeds of the Future and Further Wonders. We have journeyed through the amazing world of plant biodiversity. We started with the simple bryophytes. These small plants first colonized land. We then explored pteridophytes like ferns. They developed vascular systems and true leaves. Next came the gymnosperms, the naked seed plants. They evolved seeds and pollen, reducing water dependency. Finally, we marveled at the angiosperms. These flowering plants dominate our world today. Their flowers and fruits are key to their success. Each plant group shows increasing adaptation to life on land. Key evolutionary steps include vascular tissues, true roots, stems and leaves were also crucial. The evolution of seeds provided better protection for embryos. Pollen freed plants from needing water for fertilization. Angiosperms refined these adaptations further. Their flowers attract pollinators effectively. Their fruits aid in seed dispersal. This progression highlights the power of natural selection. Plants have evolved remarkable ways to survive and reproduce. Understanding plant biodiversity is crucial. It helps us appreciate the natural world. Keep exploring the amazing world of plants.